Yeah. Hello. This is the other van I'm working on this season. This one is a 2018 Mercedes Sprinter. It's a four x four, dually, 3,500, 170 inch wheelbase. So I'm gonna give you a tour of the cardboard stage and discuss the client objectives. The Sprinter van is narrower than the Promaster. Also, the walls taper towards the roof, much more so than a Promaster. Promaster's kind of boxy. Sprinter does this. Uh, so that poses some concerns. They're not problems. They're just things you need to be aware of when you're designing and building in a Sprinter versus a Promaster. For instance, we're putting in a Novacool 9000 refrigerator. It's a big fridge. It's AC-DC, there's no propane in any of these builds. You can position this refrigerator so that it fits into the window cutouts of the van chassis. And you gain three inches by doing so. And that's important for a number of reasons in the aisle. You need to make sure that your aisle is wide enough for two people to pass by if the van is for a couple. And the other issue is make sure that fridge can come out into the aisle and be removed from the van. Once the whole van's built and completed, you gotta replace the fridge. You gotta make sure you can get it out and get the new one in. So that's another consideration with this distance. And you gotta tie all that in with client objectives. What it is that they want, what's most important to each of the clients in these builds. Uh, this client wanted a very large bathroom, as large as we could make it. So I did put in a larger bath. I think this is 38 by 42 net on the inside. It's a wet bath. The bathroom and shower are all contained here. I would rather have some sort of a sliding door rather than a door that hinged. Although it's possible it can go either way. I do like having the door. I think this is a 24 inch opening, 22 inch opening. Uh, I like having a door on the bathroom box, a single pass-in, rather than the double doors that the road tracks and the carries had. And the reason for that is it gives you another inner wall for a medicine cabinet, for instance. So that's something to think about on the inside. Uh, because this is encroaching into the aisle, because it's a larger bath, I had to take away some of my depth on the galley. That's what building a van is, it's give and take. You, gotta, you want big inches here, you gotta take them from here. You can't have everything, so you gotta start to weigh what is most important. Uh, so I've got a 15 or 16 inch countertop here, as opposed to 18 or 19 inches in a Promaster. And that's because we wanted a deeper shower box and we have a bigger fridge to contend with and we've got the curve of the walls to contend with. So this is how you play the game. It's like Tetris. Got a closet over here between the fridge box and the bathroom. There's a nice little closet area with a, a little dresser with some closed drawers and a top for storing stuff. This could be two hanging bars. It could be the dresser and hanging bars. It could be open. It could have a, a timbre door. It could have a hinge door, no door. I've got some room here on the galley for clothing as well. Um, the galley is gonna house the fresh water tank and you'll see why later on in the video. So like the Vagabond van, we're gonna put the water tank under the galley on this side. And that water and the countertop, the stone countertop, counteracts the weight of the refrigerator and the uh, shower box. Uh, because we tuck this fridge in into one of those window wells, 
that leaves us a lot of room above it. In the, in the Pro Master I did for the Vagabonds, we were able to run that all the way up to the top and give them a nice large laundry box underneath the fridge. We can't run this one to the top because that would mean we'd have to pull it further out, almost six inches into the aisle because of the curve of the van. So we've got to tuck this fridge box into one of those uh, depressions in the chassis. That gives us this space up top here. You could put a microwave up here or maybe your crock pots and your blenders. A lot of storage. If you want to make this an appliance garage, this is a nice size appliance garage. We've also got drawers on the galley, as always. You got your cabinet, you got some utensil drawers. And then over here, as I said, it could be clothing drawers for the client. These are clothing drawers, hanging clothes. We've got wall cabinets going in. Now, let me show you what I got going over here. Down at the rear end of the van here, we're gonna have a fixed bed, okay? It's gonna be a queen size bed, fixed platform, and it's freestanding underneath. There's no supports. A lot of storage, room for my mechanicals. Queen size beds are 75 by 60. This one is gonna live north, south. 75 inches this way, 60 inches this way. At this height in the van, a Sprinter is only 70 inches wide. Mattress is 60, gives us five inches on a side, which is fine because we need that five inches to allow airflow coming through these Lawrence windows, okay? 75 inch mattress comes to here, okay? That would leave you nothing, nowhere to sit. These owners like the idea of having a little dinette down the end here. This is a nice place where they can have dinner. It's a dining room. I told you we're living in the plaza, right? So here's the dining room. These are facing dining seats, okay, during the day. But what do we do with this mattress if you wanna have dinner? The mattress is gonna fold. There's 45 inches of mattress over here and 30 inches of mattress here. 30 inches is gonna cut you just below your, your hips. So when you're sleeping, that seam, that folded seam is down by your thighs, lower thighs. So you should be okay, knees. Uh, so it's, it's gonna have to be a custom mattress, two pieces, and the hinge, so to speak, is sewn into the mattress wrap or the mattress cover. So you're, during the day, you're gonna have a stacked folded mattress here, okay? I don't wanna see that. This is the Waldorf, right? The plaza. So what I did is I built this platform. Now this, this is now a blind during the day to hide the folded mattress. You don't see it. You just see the puffiness up here. Nice. So now you've got this dining area. When it comes time to sleep, you put your seat cushions down, you release your stop, and you bring this forward. Now this is a structural platform. It's just an extension of the fixed bed platform up front, up in the rear rather. Now I got my 75 inches. Now you unfold the mattress. You've got this huge bedroom now. There'll be a nice set of stairs, not a ladder, stairs right here. They're gonna live under the refrigerator. You pull them out, put them in place, you step into the bed. Bed's about eight inches, mattress about eight inches. So eight and eight stacked up, 16 inches. In the morning, you bring this back up. You put your cushions up and you're ready for breakfast. Uh, these seat boxes, uh, this is the first time that I've built the seat boxes over the fenders, the wheel wells. And we're only over half the wheel well. The rear half of the wheel well is in the garage behind this bulkhead. So the seat boxes will be designed so that I've got shoe storage in the front. I've got a great deal of room here. Under each of these boxes, you'll have shoe storage in the front. When you lift the seat bottom up, you'll have easy access to some mechanicals and or storage. For instance, I could put my water pump and all my zone valves underneath this seat. Very easy to get to, very easy to inspect on a, a regular basis. I always like to look at all my plumbing in the van as I'm traveling to make sure I didn't develop any weeping. It happens, right? Earthquake inside, hurricane outside. So you gotta keep an eye on those things. So they have to be easily seen. They're not buried. You know the song. Um, this bulkhead, as I call it, right here behind this bulkhead is the big Mameluke battery. 
and it's perfect. It's sitting right on the axle, right on the rear axle. So between these wheel wells over the axle is a great spot to put my heavier components. So my big Mameluke battery is here. My 70 pound inverter is over there. And my water tank will be over, my water heater will be over on this side. I was able to put in some little st storage cubbies on each side of the seating here. Obviously you'd think right away you're gonna bring a pull out table out of here, which is fine, that's nice to do. But if you pull that table out and you set it for dinner, you're trapped in here, you can't get out. You push that thing in, all the dishes and candelabras are gonna fall on the floor. So I gotta work on that. We gotta find a way that each of them could move a table and get out. Now these cushions, uh, I designed these two facing benches so that you could buy any patio cushion. You can go to Front Gate, you can go to Wayfair, you can go to Home Depot. Depending on what kind of quality level you want, all of these patio cushions are basically the same size, 24, 24 seat area, and then 15 to 18 inches up. So this way, uh, you can change them out easily. You can swap them seasonally, if you like. This seat in the dining room was a little bit tight because of this refrigerator wall. A little claustrophobic when you got your half wall, mattress wall here, you got the fridge wall here. You're confined, you're stuck in here. So I did leave an option. It's a, it's a, a version of the floor plan that we're gonna go through with the owners and see what they feel about it. Uh, you do give something up, there's always a compromise, but you've gotta decide what's more important. If you notice right now, I've got the refrigerator box. I've got nice arm wire with hanging closet above it. And then I got the wet bath down the end. There's one change I can make that will alleviate this claustrophobic situation here in the dining room. Huh? Here's what I did. I opened things up in a big way. It was a price to pay. There's a cost. I moved the refrigerator box down. I took the armoire and hanging clothes out. This is the armoire. I just put it out, put it in here, made the room. In doing this, I have to bring my refrigerator out. You can see the space that I'm giving up, almost four inches, because I had the refrigerator box tucked in this glass depression. Moving it down, I am encountering a beam in the chassis. I have to stay in front of that beam. So we've just lost about three inches of our aisle width. The fridge still can come out and exit the van. But these are the trade-offs. It's a game you gotta play. I actually like this. I think this is a game changer. I think this openness, you'll sit here all night chatting. It's comfortable. You don't have that fridge wall here. That's gonna be a nuisance. This opens things up. And again, we've got the class A of class B's going on. And this is a 170 wheelbase. This is not the extended sprinter, okay? We're dealing with some tight space here and I think it's working. Now, uh, this could be the same height as your galley. We could have a 36 inch high countertop here, although it isn't necessary. This is kind of nice as well. It's at elbow height and your, my bed box will come right down onto here. You could put a nice little lamp in the corner. This, you know, put some tchotchkes on here. This, you know, a, a side countertop like this is kind of nice in a van, very cozy. So this might, be the, this might be the way we go. We give up the hanging closet. This is a 16 inch wide base cabinet with 15 inch drawers for clothing. I got two big drawers over here, 18 inches. No hanging clothes. I took it away to get this elbow room. I'd be willing to give up the hanging clothes. As I said in an earlier video, when you live in a van, your habits change. What you think is important isn't really that important in van life. Hanging clothes is one of them. Most people roll their clothes and put them away. Maybe I could steal a little bit of room here. Maybe I could steal five inches. It takes away from your drawers, but I could give them enough room for four hangers. We have to see, I gotta play around, but right now, now I've really got two great lounge areas. I've got the workstations up front with swivels. And now back here, we can relax, have a glass of wine. Nice.